Every three years in the church's uh, infinite wisdom, uh, we take a break uh, from reading Mark's gospel during year B, and we switch over to John's gospel, and we switch over to John chapter uh, 6. And so John chapter 6 is kind of known as that, that bread of life discourse, which we'll, we'll see in John 6, 51 uh, to, to 58. However, today we start with the beginning of, of John's uh, chapter 6, which of course we know this story, the feeding of the 5,000. It's not only in John's gospel we have the feeding of the 5,000, but in every gospel we have the, the feeding uh, of, of the 5,000. And so we know it's definitely a miracle that, that Jesus uh, performed. And it's also important to realize where did it happen? It states that, uh, that Jesus went up the mountain uh, and was the Jewish feast of Passover was near. Whenever we, heard that, whenever we hear that word Passover, our mind should automatically go to two places. Number one, of course, the Israelites and their slavery in Egypt, but also should go to the Last Supper, because we know that the Last Supper is celebrated uh, during uh, Passover. And so we can already see that uh, connection. And so now with, with this Passover uh, coming near, what does Jesus do? Well, he takes the five loaves and the two fish, and he feeds 5,000 men. This, too, would also be kind of a, a, a something people would have known about a little bit ahead of time, because we heard about this in our first reading uh, from the book of Kings. Elisha, the great prophet, uh, takes 20 barley loaves, and feeds 100 men. And even then, people were saying, how could 20 barley loaves feed the, these 100 men? And yet Jesus takes the five barley loaves and the two fish, and he multiplies them and feeds not only the 5,000 men, but also the women and the children uh, as well. So many scholars think, you know, between uh, 15 and 20,000 people are fed off these five loaves and two fish. But what that symbolizes as well, we know, is that Jesus doesn't only want to give us that, that bread back then, doesn't just want to give us that bread, the manna in the desert. He wants to give us himself. He wants to give us himself and that we can have this bread that's going to give us life eternal, we'll never be hungry again, and help us in that Passover from this world uh, to the next. And we'll, we'll talk about that more in the upcoming weeks as we do a little deeper dive into the beauty uh, of the Eucharist. But one of the most profound things of the gospel account today, and I think we always get caught up on this one too, which is good, is that this, this boy, this, this young man, this, this, this boy that was off by himself, we know, so it wasn't, you know, three or four years old, but probably sent off by his parents, and we wanted to go see this man named Jesus. What does he do? He gives freely of the five loaves and the two fish. And so in our old life, we have to think, okay, how can I give freely uh, as well? You know, think about it, he's the only one there that actually has food with him. So he must have been a Boy Scout or something, always coming uh, prepared. But it wasn't the preparation that we, we care about so much. It's more about that he gave freely. And even then, you know, Andrew says, what good is this to, for so many uh, that are here? But, but Jesus said simply, have the people recline. You know, Jesus can, we know this, he can work miracles even with our scraps, he can work miracles. He can do good things. And so what we're called to do is to give all that we have over to the Lord. We lay it down before him, say, Lord, take this. You know, these five loaves, these two fish, whatever it may be, I give it freely to you so you may use it in a way that is not only going to help me, because that's a very selfish thing, but that's okay, but also the community uh, as, as well. And this is, what, of course, what Jesus uh, will, will do. In every single Mass that we go to, we're able to offer up some sort of intention uh, to the Lord. You hear me say in the opening prayer, you know, before we start the Mass, as we pray together, who my Mass intention is for. As, as a priest, we, I have the opportunity to say Masses for, for different people, and you can request that. At least one Sunday, uh, uh, one Mass a Sunday or a Saturday night will be, be for the parish, but other times it will be for the repose of the soul of someone, or maybe someone celebrating an anniversary, whatever it may be, I'll be able to say Mass that way. But I'm not the only person that can offer a Mass. You are as well. 
every single time you come to Mass, I encourage you saying, who should I offer this Mass up for? Maybe it would be uh, your, your grandparents. Uh, today, actually, the Pope has asked us all to make this World Day of Grandparents. So what a beautiful thing to do to pray for your grandparents, alive or, or, or deceased. Maybe you have a friend of yours that's going through a difficult time. Maybe there's a coworker. Maybe there's something you want to celebrate. I know some families here always have a birthday present, have their uh, mass said for, for their children. And I'm able to realize, oh, uh, that child had, had a birthday uh, this week. And so those are beautiful things that, that we can do. And I encourage us to do that uh, as well. But also what we're called to do during, during the offertory is to help out the needs of, of the poor uh, and help out those who maybe uh, aren't prepared like we are or maybe are in, are in uh, need. You know, our church has had this tradition since 1994, 1995 to have an offertory uh, procession. I know that many uh, people in the, in the church today, many people in the congregation are, are new parishioners. So if you haven't been here, uh, since uh, before COVID, you've probably never seen this before. But before COVID, we used to have something called an offertory uh, procession, where everyone would process down the aisle, and we'd put gifts into, into different baskets. And the reason for this is actually in the Roman Missal, uh, it states that uh, it would be a good idea, possibly even not only to present the bread and the wine, but also gifts uh, for, for the poor, to help the relief, those in need, and also gifts for the church. So this has been a tradition of ours since 1994, 1995, underneath the direction of Father Walnick. Uh, talking to fellow parishioners and some staff as well, we have decided uh, that next week we are bringing back the offertory uh, procession. And so today I just want to kind of walk through what that, that looks like. And so uh, first off, for the offertory procession, uh, what we do is we have everyone, after the prayer for vocations, we'll have the ushers come up, and then everyone processes forward. Now, the most important thing during the offertory procession isn't even putting stuff in the baskets. We'll get to that really quickly. But the most important part of the offertory procession is when you process up, I want you to stop right here, and you're going to bow in front of the altar. And at that time, really encourage you Say, okay, what am I laying down uh, before the Lord? What am I offering up uh, to, to the Lord? Or who am, I, who am I praying for? Once again, maybe, maybe your grandparents, maybe a friend. Maybe you're giving in Thanksgiving uh, for a birthday or something. Or maybe, just maybe, you think your pastor needs prayers. What should I do? A beautiful thing to pray for. Please do, right? But anyways, when we come forward, uh, simply to, to bow and say, Lord, I lay this down before you. There's this beautiful saying, you know, we, we lay it down at the foot of the cross or at the foot of the altar. So kind of being like that, that boy uh, in the gospel, Lord, take this uh, from me. And then once you do that, we'll have you kind of separate to different sides, and you'll see that there's baskets up here. Uh, there's three different baskets. And, and once again, the first basket over here, this is for our Southwest Option Options for women, so a, a pregnancy center. And so this is for uh, men and women who, who've decided to, to have a child, uh, uh, even though they're, they're struggling, that they need help. You know, we, of course, as a Catholic church, are a, a pro-life church. We're a pro-life parish. But that also means we want to help people and support them. As you know, if you've had children, it's not exactly the cheapest thing in the world, right? You know how expensive diapers can be. And so maybe if... Uh, you, you go to Sam's Club or you go to Target or wherever, and you think, oh, I could pick up a pack of diapers. Please do. Uh, we can drop it. If I don't think it's going to fit in this basket, but you can put it right next to the side of that. You know, my sister, a couple years ago, uh, on her first child, uh, she got two diaper genies. I didn't know those things existed, uh, by the way. And she said, I don't need two diaper genies. So she gave me one to drop off uh, for the Total Life Care Center. To be honest with you, it's kind of awkward as a priest having a diaper genie in the back of my truck for a week, but eventually I got it out of there. But once again, uh, diapers, uh, baby wipes, pacifiers, blankets, onesies, or cash is what should go in here, other things uh, like that. The second basket up here, the bigger one, this is for ICA Food Shelf. Once again, you've seen ICA 
around. This is to help those who, who need help with, with food. And so anytime, you know, non-perishable goods or toiletries as well, that's really a big one that uh, they really want help with. And so uh, shampoo, uh, body soap, uh, um, toilet paper, all those things here as well. Or if you're at Costco and you see the 36-pack of macaroni and cheese, it'd be a great thing to put in here uh, as well. By the way, we are going to continue to have the ICA food shelf bins and the Total Life Care Center bins outside as, as well. So if you do go shopping during the week and you just want to drop it off, you can drop it off uh, in, in those bins. By the way, ICA absolutely loves our church because we do a collection every single uh, week. And so once again, starting next week, make sure to bring those non-perishable items or other things in. And let's make sure these baskets are, are overflowing. Our donations have gone down over this past year for ICA because, well, we're not grabbing something out of the shelf every single time. And so please, let's get those back up if, if possible. Once again, another great gift for ICA uh, is, is money. Uh, the third basket up here, this is obviously uh, for <clears throat> our offertory. And so this is where we put, you know, cash or the, uh, the envelopes we send out or stuff like that. It's interesting, uh, this, this past year, our, our collections, if you looked in the bulletin, uh, were about 8 to 10% higher than the previous year. So we actually did better, even with some lower attendance uh, with Offter. I think one of the reasons for that is many people have switched to online giving, which we uh, encourage. So that would be, you know, the direct withdrawal, not direct deposits. We're not depositing money into your account. Instead, we do it the, the other way. Uh, but we encourage you to do that. Or, of course, you know, when you come here to drop off your envelopes. And people say, why, Father, should we have an envelope? Why not just give cash? Well, I know it's a very silly reason, but one of the reasons is that way we can give you a tax deduction as well. So make sure to get your name on there. But I just want to thank you, the parishioners, for, for stepping up this, this past year. Uh, I talked to many fellow uh, pastors and, and priests, and I, we're one of the few churches, at least in the state of Minnesota, that our collections have gone up the past year. Many saw about a 5 to 10 percent decrease. Uh, we saw about that 8 to 10 percent increase. So I want to thank you uh, for that. Of course, if we continue to, to continue that offertory, we're able to continue to offer uh, more ministries and also make some improvements around the church. I know I talked about this, preached about this last week a little bit, but hopefully you can, you can hear me better this week and last week because, well, with a greater offertory, we were able to add uh, a better speaker system. So that's just a silly example, but it, but it, makes, it makes a difference. So thank you so much uh, for your generosity uh, to continue to support the parish of, of St. John the Baptist and in turn, uh, helping people encounter uh, Christ. But I am I'm very excited, and I hope you are as well, to start that offertory procession again uh, next week. Because what it shows is we're not doing this by, by ourselves. We're not the only person uh, giving. We come together as a community uh, to support each other and, and to support the church. And, and sometimes the thing we need to offer the most is this ourself to the Lord. You know, sometimes... We may not feel like we're even worth five barley loaves or two fish. Sometimes we may feel like we're just crumbs, right? We just feel that way. But when we offer that to the Lord, Lord, <laughs> I got nothing this week, but I give that nothing over to you. What is he going to do? He's going to transform it. He's going to multiply it. And he's going to make it good. And so let's continue to give what we have freely over to the Lord and let him continue to transform us and transform our parish.